Video equipment rental costs paid for by peep code screencasts. Today's talk is about uh, Anvil, a desktop application framework in Ruby. Um, show of hands, how many of you have actually done desktop application work? Well, that's quite a few, quite a few. That's impressive. So the, the goal of this talk is actually to get contributors. So who's actually interested in desktop application work? Still a good amount. <laughs> OK, before we proceed, just wanted to do my little who am I plug. This is me. <laughs> Actually, my legal name is Lancelot. Um, it's not prefixed with sir. And if you don't believe me, you can, I'll show you my license after the talk. But. <laughs> it's not John, please. Not quite as funny as John Cleese, close, but not quite. Uh, this is my consultancy. It's called Ruby Skills. Shills. I'll have to fix that then. <laughs> and I'm actually, I just finished, or we're doing the, we're in the editing phase uh, on this book uh, with Bruce Tate. Um, it should be released in October. So for all the, the new guys getting into Rails, this is a perfect reference. So back to the real topic. This is the goal. We want you. So what is it? It's, it's common to say that it's an application framework. And when you define an application framework, what is it? What is its goal? Um, its goal is to develop applications. Now, that's a very vague statement. It's, in, in this case, it's also an integration framework. It's taking all of the pieces that you need to do a successful application and putting them together. Um, at the moment, there's a lot of fragmentation. Um, th well, actually, there's only, there's only the one part that has b kind of been fulfilled, and that's the view part, the toolkit part. There's no, there's no hook into the, to the data layer, which on a lot of applications, I think you deal with data, unless you want to create you know, a timer application, which you can store in memory. So it's an integration framework in addition to being an application framework. These are the various GUI toolkits available in the Ruby space. How many of you? have actually used one of these. Shoes? WX Ruby? FX Ruby? What do you think of FX's looks? <laughs> Cutie? Or cute? How do you pronounce it? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> GTK? OK, Ruby Coco. It's kind of the same group I see. Cool. Have you contributed to any of them? Hmm. <laughs> so the first one, I'm, I'm actually going to go into sort of a, an intro into where we are at with these GUI toolkits. Shoes is actually a very wildly popular toolkit right now in the Ruby space. Um, the premise is that you can develop desktop applications using a, a um, Ruby-like syntax um, and with the, the mindset that you're, you're using sort of a web-based uh, layout, like um, some of the syntax kind of resembles what it would look like in HTML, um, like an image is the, the equivalent of an image tag is it just says image and then where the image is located. So this is very elegant. You're going to see that some of the stuff that actually shoes was a huge inspiration for me for Anvil. Here's an example of a shoes app. 
This is actually not one of the cooler ones. I just pulled this off the home page. But, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. It, it, does, it can handle smaller applications. That's kind of what its use was for, little widgets. WX Ruby. This is what I started Anvil on. It's a pain in the butt. It has very C++-like syntax. And I'll get into that later. It also has some issues. But they're getting there. Here's an example of a WX Widgets application. WX Ruby, for all of you that don't know, is actually a project that was created to wrap the WX Widgets uh, platform, which is already, I think, in C++ Python. Another example in Windows XP. So it, it, does, it does a fair job at actually emulating the native environment. FX Ruby. Now this one is interesting because I actually found that Developing in FX Ruby was the best experience I had, at least from the syntax point of view. Right? You instantiate objects, things are pretty clear. But it looks like this. Right? That that looks like Windows 98. Windows 95? <laughs> 311. We're getting bad. So this is kind of what I feel about it. Cute Ruby. Now this, actually, the syntax was a little bit better. Um, or, I mean, just it's about, it, about the same status is FX Ruby is, I'd say. But there, there are some pretty, pretty big challenges to, to actually get um, it to run on your machine if you're manually compiling it. And, but it looks really nice. So I've actually decided to start developing in, in Qt Ruby first because it I want to be cross-platform right off the bat. And the goal of this is to really aim towards those enterprise guys. An example of, a, of an actual uh, Acuity app that it looks really nice is Skype. Skype is Acuity app. And it's cross-platform. And I don't know, does, does anyone think that Skype looks ugly? This is KDE. KDE runs on Qt. So if you, if you can do KDE apps, or if you can do uh, Qt apps, you can do this kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. There's no limit. <coughs> GTK is uh, actually pretty uh, small space. Um, it's, it's only for the GNOME. Um, windowing, I guess, what would you call it? Manager? It's not a window manager. It's, it's more of a style of desktop. Um, the syntax is not bad, but it's only, actually, that should be Ruby-Gnome 2, depending on <laughs> which version of GNOME you want to develop for. But it's only for a, certain, a very specific niche. But there are people that like it. Here's an example of uh, GNOME applications. So the problems. The problems in the Ruby space. Well, we have a lot, but I'm only going to address the ones I'm frustrated with in this space. We have a missing framework. 
A missing framework like Rails, like Merb. In this space, we're missing all the integration paths. We're missing that, that, that thing, that special gold mine uh, framework that, that, put, that brings the community together and makes it really simple for the average developer to get in there and start coding and get excited about this. Because Ruby is a beautiful language. And actually, we'll get back to that. Another problem. Toolkit identity crisis. It's pretty bad. I'll skip the slide so you guys don't have to look too much. Um, this is what I mean, right? Ruby doesn't have its own toolkit. It, it wraps everybody else, which is fine. But this is not acceptable, in my opinion. If you're going to develop in a language, you need to follow the conventions. Right. They are, try they are moving in that direction. Still not what I would, even, even this, instantiating objects and then saying, you know, yeah. Yeah. title or text equals whatever. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get to the cool part soon. <laughs> There's also a learning curve problem. The majority of Ruby developers right now, and I, I largely uh, feel that Rails is at fault, <laughs> are web developers. And that's all you guys care about. And that's fine. But you can't neglect the power of client-side software. And, and there's several reasons why. Here's one. Ego. I love getting these kinds of pictures. <laughs> Right? These guys, everyone else is laughing at us. They, they're, they're, everyone, Java has Swing. Python has a better implementation of WX widgets than we do. We don't have anything solid yet. So we need to catch up. Right now, they're laughing at us. Small talk people would also say, of course, they've, they've solved everything, you know, <laughs> that we're missing an editor. And I would agree, right? How, how did we fail to create an editor in Ruby? Is it, is it too challenging to create an editor in Ruby? Is it maybe there's not enough money in it? But we're missing, we're missing fundamental, fund, a fundamentally easy applications to create and extend, right? If, if you have a Ruby-based editor, the people using it are coding in Ruby and should know Ruby and should easily be able to extend it. The Emacs developers use, li uh, use Lisp, and they can easily extend their editor. I think that you should, it, you know, if you're, if you're stuck, if, you, if you're in a language, you should, you should try to create your tool space around what you're doing. And, and be, at least use the languages you're familiar with. A native client. I think it's ridiculous to have to have a, a client application that looks like Windows in OS X. I think <laughs> you should have a native environment, a native client. And, and I also disagree with the fact that, OK, everything's going to the web. Everything's going to be a web application. We can just completely make the browser do all of the heavy lifting. We're treating the browser like an operating system. <laughs> and and it, it's complicated. It, we're, we're, we're stuffing. Um, these giant applications into we're, we're, we're trying to stick a, a you know a, a square into the a, a square peg into a circle one hole and uh, I don't care how often you say that 
you know, what, everyone's shifting to web applications. I've heard that so many times. But you cannot neglect the fact that there's still a client. There's, there, there are reasons to, to distribute some of that logic to the client. And, and you, can, you can create some amazing applications if you utilize the power of the client. A good example would be Basecamp and their time post to module. Giving that kind of ability, the, the ability to, from your desktop, record the amount of hours that you spent working, press save on your desktop, and have it just send that to Basecamp. That's pretty powerful. Extending your web applications like this for your customers is going to provide a lot of value. <clears throat> So, some features and ideas. Did a lot of thinking about this, but I need, I need some help on this. Not, it, it's one, one mind cannot think of all of these things. Uh, this, this framework is a very ambitious idea. Even DHH didn't think of everything. I don't think. One, one key to success, I think, will be being database agnostic. And that's not that hard because we have Active Record, we have Data Mapper, and we have SQL. So I've already, I've already seen that there's code that can do it, and I think plugging into that will be really easy. <clears throat> Toolkit agnostic. This one is a little bit controversial. Because why not just wrap one toolkit? Why not just pick one? My argument is that none of the toolkits give you exactly what you want. You want, everyone has their opinion about how they want their application to look. I don't want to limit people to one toolkit when they think, well, that, that one sucks. <clears throat> and if we can utilize the power of all of the toolkits in under one framework, I think we are well beyond any other community. Because we can say, oh, you know, I can make a QD app. I can make a GTK app. I can make a Ruby Coco app really quickly. I can take all of the business logic of an application, stick it in a place, in, in, a, in an Anvil application, and then and then I can, I can just let it run, and it will, it will use GTK. It will use the native toolkit. It'll use whatever toolkit you want. I think that's well beyond what anyone else is capable of, capable of doing. Plugins using Ruby gems. This is not an old thing. This is at Merb um, actually is exploring this space quite a bit. Um, it's, I think, fundamentally, uh, there are challenges to getting it to work, uh, as Merb has seen. But it's, it's, not a hard, it's not a hard problem to solve. It's solvable. Um, but I think that packaging plugins as gems is a better way than packaging plugins and then sticking them in your vendor directory. I don't know what you guys think. Take what you want, leave what you don't. MVC. <laughs> I wanted to get the other picture, the one where, where uh, controllers like, but <laughs> I couldn't get the video frame to. You guys should post pictures. Model. I already went into the details about being database agnostic. I think that Merb has already taken a pretty good uh, stance on how to, to, to get this to work. You just specify which, which ORM you want to use, and then you can use that. And then, and then have your ORM decide in your database YAML file, OK, I want to use Postgres or whatever. Usually in desktop applications, you want to use 
SQL Lite or something similar. But all I mean, all you uh, you just specify, and then you you can have your model as uh, you just inherit from uh, Anvil's model class, not base. Actually, yes. I was going to say you might. Uh, yeah, you can't get away with that with Active Record because you have to inherit from Active Record base, but not my fault. Controller will be restful. Now this is an interesting idea. Why would you want controllers to be restful in a desktop application when you're not confined by HTTP? I think fundamentally, REST is a good idea. I think making your M and your C just a service to your data is, is, um, is a good idea. And that it forces you to be creative about the namespace and the business logic within your application, rather than trying to just get it done. There should be more of a thought process. There's some debate on this RESTful thing. And I, I won't confine it to REST, right? Convention over configuration. But fundamentally, I believe in REST, even in the desktop application space. That also helps Rails developers, because we already know how to do REST. Events, similar to routes. I'll get into more detail about that later. And delegation. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to delegate objects, active record or data mapper objects, to a view? And, and just say, render this kind of widget, this predefined widget, and then have it pre-populate everything else. <coughs> Powerful stuff. Here's an example of a controller. I'm not stuck on this syntax, but I think this could be some powerful stuff. Find all of your accounts. Delegate that object to the view. Maybe it's a, an accounts table widget. And then you just list all of your accounts in the view. Pretty simple. Does this make you want to go and develop a desktop app? Views. There's going to be a standard DSL. So you don't have to worry if you're developing for Qt, Qt, GTK, Ruby Coco. Doesn't matter because it's all standard. You worry about your business logic. You worry about what you care about. And that's your, that's your application, not this C++ syntax that in Ruby, Kubi, right? They'll be reusable, like I said, generalized. And for the times when you have to customize, there will be additional syntax to handle that. Because there are some native toolkit options that you probably wouldn't have in other toolkits that you might want to tap into. Here's an example of a view. I'm also not stuck on the syntax, but it closely resembles where I think we'll be. Can you do the shoot style view? Would that be an example of the DSL? Yes. But you will use my standard DSL if you wanted to wrap shoes, which is kind of weird, but. You want to confine your business logic, make that standard, and then not have to worry about what outputs at the other end. Events. This looks a lot like routes. So every time I click a button, maybe I'm, I'm going to fire, I fire off an event, and then it handles it, and it sends it to the show action on the Hello World controller. Actually, this is the, the init setup. So similar to root in Rails, 
when you initialize your application, maybe you want to create a splash initializer. Or you just want it to fire up the initial settings. Code generators. I think these are important, vitally important to getting a framework adopted and making sure that these are up to date. At the moment, I'm not so sure. <laughs> but you will be able to use the Anvil dash gen gem. It's a plugin. Testing all the fucking time. Our spec support is going to be included. <coughs> More to come soon. I'm an RSpec fan. If you guys want to integrate test unit or shoulda or whatever, sure. Packaging and distribution. Now this is a problem actually that I realized quite early going into this space going into trying to figure out how to create desktop applications. This is similar to the Rails problems we had with deployment, right? We were using dispatch.fcgi. Ew. Right now, we really don't have a good way to do this. Wouldn't it be nice if we could package your Anvil application and all your business logic in addition to some Ruby VM all of your gems, et cetera, in an EXE or a DMG and send that off and sell it. I don't know where we're at with this. I've talked to Evan about it. He seems to have some ideas. We'll see. But I think because we're web developers, we have not thought about this problem. And we should. I was actually going to, I think I had a slide, because I like inserted it right. after your talk. <laughs> yeah, this was talked about last year at Ruby's call, that exact thing. I had that talk. What's it, what's it called? Crate. Crate? It does not exist on the web yet, but it will be in the next week or so. Oh, cool. My, uh, the Fibrance client is built the same way. It's been around for a bit in the last five years. Cool. Well, Send me an email. Keep me posted. Maybe you can insert a rake task into my project. <laughs> OpenGL. We can already do this, but we don't have a good DSL for it. And I think there's some interesting things we can do with this. Very intrigued to see what we can do with Ruby to accomplish cool OpenGL projects. Status quo. I've pretty much finished the configuration and initialization classes and all that stuff. I have a clear idea of how MVC is going to work. The model has, is missing, but copying over some of the way Merb does it shouldn't be a problem. Controller, that's, there's only a few things that need to be there. It's more of the gateway to the view. But the view is a big problem because we have to wrap at least one toolkit to, to make sure that this thing is usable. And I'm working on Qt integration right now. What's needed? Any designers in here? Cool. Think you can? Uh... <laughs> Definitely need some contributors. This is an exciting place. This is, we, uh, everyone is laughing at us, like I said earlier, because they're taking our, our, you know, this, this whole industry, and there's a lot of money to be had. Why aren't we there? Logo? <coughs> Hornbeck. Hosting? <laughs> I 
So I'm going to do a quick demo. So if you just run the anvil command, it should fire up your environment. And <coughs> this was actually originally uh, presented at eRubyCon, so I put Jim Wyrick in there. Uh, back to the presentation. So you can see that, you know, it's, <laughs> there's my demo. Um, And I'll show you the code in a minute. But if we can create the Trojan Bunny and actually remember to be in the Trojan Bunny, <laughs> for this industry, I think we'll take them by storm. And I don't think they'll know what's coming to them. They'll just, we'll have more Java programmers. I don't know. That's a good or a bad thing, but we'll have more movement. <laughs> this slide came up because of eRubyCon, actually. Uh, Neil Ford uh, and a bunch of other guys were injecting Angela Jolie slides. But uh, so I, had, I have to tie it in somehow. Ruby is sexy, right? If we create a framework that is sexy, which we've, had, we've done in the past, people will love programming again. In Dest I think maybe, maybe I'm being naive, but maybe part of the reason people are scared of desktop application development is because they don't enjoy it anymore. And because I prefer blondes. <coughs> So contribute. Get off your lazy butt. Thanks. Um, and it, actually, I'm going to show you uh, some code if you guys want. Are there sample apps in your store? There is a Hello World. And I've actually, I've, uh, I've started, um, I'm, I haven't gotten very far. I, I got a lot farther when I was doing WX widgets or WX Ruby. And then I kind of tracked back because I, I just did not like WX Ruby. Maybe they've, they've improved since then, but. So here's the Hello World application that just kind of magically worked. Uh, you have the application controller inherits from the Anvil controller. You have the Hello World controller with an empty show because it defaults to whatever view you have. Hello World and then the show view. And this is empty. But this looks very f similar to a Rails app or a Merv app. Here's the events. Here's your init.rb, where you'll be able to specify, use whatever ORM you want to use, or, and also specify toolkits. And that's it. Do you guys have any questions? Maybe. <laughs> Can you speak a little louder? Everything's going to be a DSL to the view. So you, uh, you would have, um, actually, a lot of the toolkits have native uh, OpenGL support. And 
Hi, Lance. That's me. I saw your slide. <laughs> I usually turn Twitter off. That was G. That was Gmail. The Gmail notifier. I think that um, we will have a standard DSL for the OpenGL stuff, and then that will just wrap whatever toolkit uh, OpenGL we're using. So, because Qt has its own OpenGL, even Fox, <laughs> despite its ugliness, has OpenGL support. Um, I think. I saw some 3D models. Um, any other questions? Cool. If you liked my talk, um, <coughs> vote for me on working with Rails. I was number 69. I thought that was pretty pimp. If I could preserve that, I'd, I'd be happy. But, um, and then Ruby Anvil is the IRC channel. That's all I have. Video equipment rental costs paid for by Peepcode Screencasts.